have a prediction that we're going to get our balance within the next seven days, week or so, whatever it's going to be. Um, but I have a very good idea of what's not going to be hit on the ban list. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the very most luscious long hair of the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy as always the ever living boo boo staying off that like and subscribe buttons. We can climb even higher the 1500 ladder because we are very close to 1500 subscribers. So I'm going to go ahead and just push that along, even though we're not quite there, but we only need like another 10 subscribers or so. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Thank you as always for all the support. So I want to talk about uh, what is going to be on this ban list, uh, or at least roughly what's going to be on it. Obviously, I don't have a crystal ball as much as I would love to have one. Um, but recently, Konami has been revealing things that are going to be in the Mega Tens. And one of the things, actually two of the things that they revealed, was Triple Tactic Thrust and Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils. And the Wanted poster reveal, more than anything, more than the thrust even, honestly, even though that has implications for talents that we'll talk about in a minute, that has implications for what's going to be hit on our ban list. You know, you have to keep in mind that in Rage of the Abyss, we're getting the Azamina cards, which loosely supports Dia Bellstar the Black Witch, kind of. Um, obviously, if you look at the OCG, they're using the Azamina cards with one of the fusion monsters so that they can crap out an Omni Negate and they don't have to really use Disarray with the Fiendsmith cards because it just gets you to Snake Eye Ash easier and we all know how that goes from there. But if Konami, at least from all the reveals that they've shown, they haven't shown any Snake Eye cards. And if they don't plan on reprinting any of the Snake Eye cards in the Megatons, which I don't really feel like they will, that is fine. If they're going to hit just Snake Eye cards... That is fine, because keep in mind that with this Dia Bellstar lore crap, if they want to keep Wanted at 3, unlike the OCG, and Black Witch at 3, and even Snake Eye Dia Bellstar at 3, that's fine. The Dia Bellstar cards, when you think about it, really aren't the issue. It's technically the Snake Eye slash, depending on what card you're talking about, simple spoil cards that are the issue when it comes to kicking Snake Eye in the balls, <laughs> Like, when you look at original simple spoil Snake Eye, that's like the most toxic card because that connects you to your whole level 1 fire engine and then everybody wants to kick you in the nuts because you're playing Snake Eyes. That card needs to be banned. So if you take OSS out of the picture, which Dia Bellstar the Black Witch gets you to, which inherently Wanted gets you to because that gets you to Black Witch and whatever, the Dia Bellstar cards aren't really an issue. Like, who's sitting back in my dentist-looking fucking chair and is saying, why, yes... That sinful spoils trap that lets you send a Dia Bellstar monster from Anderfield to Grave to negate a card on the field is a problem. Like, it's not. And I wouldn't be shocked if Konami pulled some baby back bullshit and said, we're going to ban this random Dia Bellstar support card. Congratulations, we fixed Snake Eye. That wouldn't surprise me. I don't think that they're going to do that, though. Because for Konami to come out and be like, look, we're dropping the ban list in late August should tell you more than anything that they know that people are pissed about this format. This is the worst format of all time. Like, it's honestly even worse than Tier Element, Tier Zero format, even though Tier Element, I would argue, is the most powerful deck of all time. But this format has just been going on for almost a year, and it, 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 Tier wasn't like that. It didn't last for several months, at least from what I recall. So I think it's safe to say that they're going to hit the Snake Eye stuff. They're probably going to leave Wanted at 3. Maybe they'll do something weird like Semi-Limited. But if you're hoping for the Dia Bellstar cards to get hit, it's just not going to happen. And honestly, that's fine. Because if Dia Bellstar the Black Witch, if the best thing it can do is get you to that whatever it's called, simple spoil trap that can negate a card, cool. That's fine, Sugar Boo Bear. I don't give a crap about that at all. So as long as you're hitting the Snake Eye cards, I'm happy. Now, when this comes to triple tags... They're putting Thrust in this 400-card fucking set, which you know that shit's going to be hard to pull. I'm just saying. They're putting Thrust in there, but they haven't revealed Talents. Now, every Tuesday and Thursday, they're revealing something. Talents could very well be in here, but I feel like it won't be because it was already in Rarity Collection with like 3,000 different printings. <laughs> what if, and this is maybe a hot take, 
what if they plan on banning talents? Now, I, I'm sure a lot of y'all are going to say, well, Avery Talents is a great out to hand traps. You get ashed, you get drolled. You can at least Talents or rip a card out of the opponent's hand, gain that knowledge. If you're going second or playing a going second deck like Tempai, whatever, you can take one of their monsters. You can, you know, do whatever. But it's also a card that pretty much every deck plays to some capacity, whether it's one Talents with two Thrust, three Thrust, three Talents, two to three Talents just in your main deck with no Thrust, maybe your side decking Thrust. It is a card that reminds me of what Konami said over a decade ago. And I'm sure some people are going to say, Avery, it was over a decade ago. It doesn't matter. It is the one piece of insight we have into how they make the ban list. And the insight that they gave to us was after the March 2012 Forbidden Limit list, when everybody was crapping all over the venue floor. They were wanting to suplex all the Konami play, all the Konami like staff through like a garden hose. The March 2012 list was like the worst list we've ever gotten outside of, I would say, the list that we got during COVID when they didn't ban VFD and they brought back like three cards to three. It was like Multi Faker, Ulti Cannonhawk, and something else, and they didn't touch anything else. People were pissed because it was during COVID. They didn't really have a lot to go off of. Um, but the March 2012 list didn't hit windups and didn't hit Insectors. Instead, it since it went in line with the OCG because both balance were tied at the hit, they were both the same thing and released at the same time pretty much. The 2012 list hit all of the uh, plant, synchro, tengu plant stuff. Meanwhile, windups was looping you for five cards out of your hand, six if they opened up Pot of Avarice or drew into it, um, and then Insectors was just crazy as well. And so because of all that pushback, Konami ended up putting out a ban list, or not a ban list, they ended up putting out a statement on like their blog that I feel like me and only like two other people read at this point, where they're like, hey, here's how we make a ban list. And they look at cards that every deck plays or players feel like they need to play and i feel like not only has the majority of hand traps fallen into that because of how tier zero snake eyes and just how good hand traps in general are but also a lot of decks even if you go on like ready for duel or carlancho store you go on their facebook or twitter page and you look at all of the top decks a lot of them play the same cards and that's something that konami when they made this blog post over a decade ago talked about that they want to avoid because back in like cookie cutter chaos format 2004 you had like 20 plus cards that you had to play pot agree graceful charity monster born sinister serpent uh, so on and so forth right you had like 20 cards that you had to play and then maybe you formed some strategy out of that and it's become the same way i feel in today's game but more with cards like triple tax whether it's thrust and or talents plus hand traps and then like other shit, right? Maybe you have some kind of archetype in there. Just look at the OCG where they're playing like 23 hand traps in their Tempai decks because they've got six Mulcharmies plus three Maxis. And obviously they've got Maxi and we don't, but the concept still remains that there's no archetype there. It's just basically hand trap the deck. You open up five hand traps, you fart them all out and you hope that you can win whenever you go to draw for your draw phase. So a part of me thinks if they don't put talents in the tins because they've already reprinted it to hell and back, what if they ban talents? It's got three effects on it, which when it first released was three cards that were banned. Obviously, Change of Heart's not banned anymore, but it's got a Pot of Greed effect to draw you two, and it's got a Forceful Century effect to look at the opponent's hand and rip a card. What deck in the game in 2024 is not usually activating a monster effect during their opponent's turn? Look at Snake Eyes with Mascarina, Flamberge Dragon, Appalosa, you name it, pimp. And so because of that, my hot take for this list is maybe we see talents get hit in some regard. Call by went from three to one and people still want call by ban. What if we see talents go to one? Again, though, I don't feel like that would really do much because then people are just going to subsidize it with thrust and maybe some other thrust targets because why not? Or maybe they play angel of blue tears, whatever the case may be. And so to kind of wrap this up all in a nice little drunken Avery LR32 bow because I need to go refill my my vodka and Sprite <laughs> or vodka Mountain Dew actually excuse me um but before I go refill it to end this point wrapping it up in a nice little adorable bow be looking at what cards Konami reveals leading up to the ban list because I do feel like keep in mind that we have a YCS coming up this weekend August 17th through 18th I believe in Sacramento California I think we're going to get a ban list after that so within the next seven days of your boy posting this video on the fucking 15th <laughs> i think we're gonna get a list the last time that they dropped a list in august believe it or not hasn't been since 2016 and it was august 29th so maybe we see a list like by the end of the month for sure if not definitely within like the next seven days or maybe they even announce it at the ycs 
but keep in mind what cards they're revealing out of the tins because I feel like that can give a decent idea as to what it is that they're going to hit. Because I would not be shocked if they don't hit things like Dia Bellstar the Black Witch, Wanted, whatever. But if they can focus on hitting cards like Ash, Poplar, Flamberge, Divine Temple, OSS, what have you, I think we're going to be in a much better position. Also, people that were saying like they they need to ban Promethean Princess and everything and even Black Witch, like I've seen a little bit online, they were never going to do that. Because keep in mind that in Quarter Century Bonanza, which is a set we get before the tins in September, because I'm pretty sure Bonanza comes out before that, um, they're reprinting Promethean Princess and Dia Bellstar the Black Witch. So they were never going to hit Promethean or Black Witch. Do I think Promethean is a broken card? Yes. But I think it's also uh, exacerbated by the fact that Snake Eyes as a fire deck is so oppressive and so busted that it just beats out everything else. That's why you see people using board breakers. And on a side note, I feel like that they might hit you bell, like maybe Nightmare Throne or Spirit Gates to one. I hope not because I really want to play you bell and feel like I'm out of the anime. Because honestly, if you open up Ash and Perm against you bell, they kind of lose, at least in my testing. But I'm also tired of this format, so I've barely been playing at all. Like I've been playing stupid Exodia crap that... Honestly, the Exodia deck is so bad. But, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. For those of y'all who are going to say they should hit Fiendsmith cards, they're going to ban Beatrice. They're not going to touch anything else. Maybe they ban Wave High King Caesar, and then they'll watch Fiendsmith and Graver go from a $101 card down to, like, 30 or 40 because then it's like, why are you even playing Fiendsmith cards? But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I'm really excited to see what this next list is. I'm getting annoyed that each day that goes by, we don't get it. But I think within, like, the next seven to eight days, we're going to get it, and we're all going to be crapping our pants together all over the venue floor. Guys, Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Be sure to pack your diapers.